Do you feel like now our government is like, you're not paying more attention to the American people. Like what I've been seeing on the internet is like, they've been taking care of more immigrants than the people that's here at home. Not even our vets. It's just, it's insane at this point. Like, yeah. So I, I'm officially an independent and um, if you look at the numbers, most Americans today don't align with either party. They're independent. Yeah. yeah that does make sense. That makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense. I mean, yeah, it's pretty uh, extreme on both sides, I'd say. Yeah. They and have, I just feel like with the news, both sides are pushing their yeah. agenda so hard and they're so twisting people's words to make things look a certain way for both sides. It's hard to just be like, they're right and they're wrong, you know? So that's very interesting, the independent, the independent stance. Cool. Yeah, and what I'm realizing is that most of America is like willing to listen and have a conversation, but that these two sides aren't. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. makes sense. They like seem to only want to hear their side and way of thinking. Yeah, it's pretty closed off. Anything outside of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then they want to put down the other person. And then they want to like demonize. Literally, no, it's, it's their fellow Americans. That's true. It's become very tribal. There's a lot it of tribalism is. in politics these days. And, and to answer your question, you know. Today is the anniversary that the House passed to HR2, which was a legislative bill to fix the border crisis. So the House passed it a wow. year ago today. It went to the Senate. So this is Chuck Schumer Senate. And the Senate hasn't moved this bill at all. So Ooh. this border crisis that we all feel, no matter what your political allegiance is, we all feel it. <laughs> and Definitely. we're watching it gouge our communities. Our communities in the most need in this country have been overwhelmed with an influx of tens of millions of undocumented migrants. And we have a border patrol that can't stop it because of the current executive orders. Yeah. And um, it's a disgrace. Like, yeah, it's, it really is. It yeah. is. If your um, administration was in office, like... What type of resources and other, like, let me say, like, other ways y'all could, like, handle this situation? So there's a number of things. First and foremost, we we need to close the border and stop sending the signal that this is a way to immigrate into the country. So if you talk to some of these individuals, they're under the impression that the Biden administration has invited immigration through crossing our border illegally. Mm. And um, as a result of that, an entire business has been created. So there are these cartels now that sell to these individuals these very, very expensive packages sometimes um, to, you know, get across our border. So they'll help these people. So we've got Chinese flying into Mexico, people from all over the world, flying into Mexico, um, connecting with these groups that are effectively cartel human traffickers and bringing um, these groups up to the border. If you go to the border and you look down on the ground, there's little SIM chips from phones because part of the package is getting an American SIM chip. Wow. So you get there, you dump your old SIM chip and put the new one in. That's insane. We've actually so, been to the border. Yeah, me and Brandon. Yeah, yeah. we went. Me and uh, we went down there with uh, Vivek actually to Eagle Pass. Oh wow! And yeah, one of the border patrol agents was like saying that uh, they put on like little wristbands on them, like little colorful wristbands, and like uh, like they'll like try to send kids across with like drugs and stuff, and you can notice them on what color wristband they have on. So they got like a lot of stuff going on out there. So many problems from it's the border. Totally organized. Oh, yeah. it's crazy. So yeah, yeah. So. It seems I was gonna ask you that. It seems like someone has an agenda and is pushing this. Like, who and why do you think this is happening? <sighs> who and why? Well, I can certainly say that it could be stopped today. Mm. There are so many tools at hand to close our border, to change the message that we will not be a party to the human trafficking of people into this country. So that can happen. Why aren't they doing it? I mean, you know, there's there's many theories. Um, I can't get a straight answer from anybody running the country right now. And, um, you know, it it 
feels intentional to me. It does. Well, it seems very too. intentional <laughs> like, at this point. Because like, just how? No, it seems very intentional. I mean, you've got to say there's organized crime on one side and then and everyone's so much, noticing it. Yeah, then there's so much done by the current administration to allow it. And then once it's here, like they're being accommodated for being here and like things like that. So it's almost like they're being incentivized to come over here. So it yeah. seems it seems very like elaborate. And then, you know, and I can see why there are so many um, theories around it, it being part of an electioneering process. That. That, yeah, I can see yeah, that it's, defi- it's definitely yeah. a, a conspiracy yeah. that uh, the seems timing is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. 2020 almost. Yeah, no, that's a very a growing conspiracy though. That that it's like an electioneering thing. I, I, when you look at which laws that the Democratic Party, the um, you know, the voter ID laws that they're specifically progressing, and you you know put it together with millions of new potential voters here that are not documented Americans, but, you know, paired with these ID laws that don't require you to show up to vote with an ID. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to debate that, that it, it certainly creates a vulnerability in our election and voting system. Oh, definitely. Well, you, you as someone in the political space, obviously you're running to be an independent candidate's VP, do you think that illegal immigrants should have the ability to vote? But our, our country is designed for American citizens that are um, paying tax dollars that have arrived here through immigration, legal immigration. Our system is designed for those individuals to vote. Um, our system is not designed for someone who's arrived here without that having gone through that process is very standard process that every nation, every democracy in the world respects um, this, this truth that, you know, their democracy is for their countrymen. Um, and we have paths to, to immigration, legal immigration in this country. We have those tools. Why hasn't this administration invested in those tools? That's a great question. That's a great question. I agree with what you said. I, that's yeah, a great question. Too. We um, all have been trying to figure that out. Well, <laughs> let, uh, if let's say uh, you and RFK were elected, what what would what do you think should be done for all the illegals that are already here? Like as we know, there's like millions that have came over. Like, how do we address that? Like I've seen people say we should give them amnesty. People say mass deportation. I mean, like I really don't know what the answer is. Like you got all these people that are here now, like, what do we do with them? Yeah, that's a great question. What would you do? That's what I don't know. I, I guess, like, the the only option is to deport. It, I don't see the other option. Like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm – it's just, like, mm-hmm. if they're all here and you give them amnesty and these things, it's, like, you kind of just let a lot of illegal things happen. Like, because it's yeah. technically, like – because my parents are – well, my dad moved here from Ghana. And so my grandparents had to do a lot to get us here. Mm -hmm. So knowing what they went through to get us here the legal way and this and that, it's just like, I just don't see, I can't really get on the wave of just letting them come illegally when I know what my grandparents did to come here legally. Same. My mom. It's just hard. My grandma. Yeah. Where where did they uh, immigrate from? China. Southern China in the 80s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. And and it is hard. It is hard to go through the immigrant process, but that challenge is is what I think makes America great because once you get here, you've you've worked so hard intentionally to do it legally and then you're here to intentionally contribute right to this great country. Right. That, you know, provides such opportunity. Yeah. To yeah. its people. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's very interesting because I've noticed a lot of like families of immigrants when they come here, they're usually successful, like because they, like you said, work so hard to be here and they're thankful for the opportunity. So they're not just going to mess that up, you know, I think so. Yeah, I think it's a real slight in the face of immigrants that really did it the right way. And, right. you know, you said deportation and. I think of my brother who overstayed his visa in New Zealand. He was coaching snowboarding um, 
uh, and he's a he's a professional snowboard instructor now and uh, he was deported when he overstayed his visa yeah that's what we <laughs> There's yeah. rules. This I mean, is very standard. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Every country has a border. I mean, us being collegiate athletes, you know, we, we run track. So a lot of guys that run track in college are international students on visas. Yeah. So we got guys who came here on visas, like left their family, haven't been home in years, and they can't even get half the stuff the illegals are getting. You know, like I got a friend who graduated, and if he didn't get a job in two weeks, he had, they were going to send him home. So, like, like just seeing all the people who have gone through like the legal measures and how yeah. they're on like a, such a short leash, and if they mess up, it's over. And yeah. then see people be incentivized for breaking the law. I mean, it's it's kind of hard to be in favor of like letting them, but like on a humanitarian issue, I can see how people think it's like inhumane to just like deport them. But we have to respect the law and order that's in place. And there are ways to deport individuals that are not militaristic. Um, I think that's the concern with, you know, progressives who are, who are their heart is, is in the right place and, and they, you know, don't want to see, like, this issue militarized um, in any extreme way. We want to see these families and people treated very humanely. So here is where I think, you know, being far right or far left is kind of dangerous because – you know, when you take one of these stances, your support base thinks, oh, yeah, deport them, deport them. And it becomes this like militaristic call versus what is reasonable, which is, you know, a, a, a reasonable deportation scheme, which is humane, which, you know, c- coincides with an immigration program. <laughs> Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because we haven't actually increased, you know, our numbers of, for example, work visas in a long time. Really? Yeah, like it's pretty flat year over year. Okay, I did not know that. So if we increased our worker visa program, yeah, and we approached these individuals that are here in the United States humanely, gave them package, and they said, you know. Like, you are here undocumented. If you're waiting for an amnesty court date, you know, here's a location. So you can do this in tandem with really strong foreign policy as well. Um, It could be a relationship with Mexico. Um, It could be a relationship with the country of origin for these individuals. And and that's that's the smart thing to do right now. Um, If we ever politicize it, you know, we don't want to run into a situation in which deportation becomes... Like uh, just another form of, of militarization of a political stance. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, I agree with a lot of what you said. Like there, there are a lot of humane ways we could address this problem. You know, yeah. uh, I've seen uh, Elon Musk, who is a uh, he uh, migrated legally to America, and I've seen people mm-hmm. call him like an extremist for having kind of the same views we have. Like we have to respect the law for legal immigration, and like a deport uh illegals and people have said that's like an extremist way to think but it seems like it just makes sense when you when you like, explain well, it. the other it's, options it's, glo- <laughs> it's kind of a global historically it's a global norm yeah. um yeah to you know it, it's it, it, this is this is kind of something that it doesn't make any sense that all of a sudden all of these countries are not allowed to maintain their borders yeah, because it, it's happening in Europe as well. Yeah, yeah we, I've seen yeah. that. I've seen a lot of clips in Europe of what's going on. It looks crazy. Yeah, and the UK, you know, to to their credit, have, have taken a stance and they've started the process of deportation as well in in response. Um, so I think that who, whomever is in the White House in November, it it really behooves them to to do what is right for this country in this moment. And make sure that our communities that are most vulnerable. I mean, I've been working in criminal justice reform for ten years, and I'll tell you, um, it, it has it, the the two largest contributors to the spike in crime have been the simultaneous, you know, locking down of the country the way it was locked down, the gouging out of income, um, wage income from the majority of American households, just gouging it out increase in chronic health and mental health as a result of that. And then you pair that with opening our borders in 2022. That, yeah, so that makes sense. Every community organizer I've spoken to has said those are the two largest contributors 
to um, the spike in crime. Wow. So, you know, as somebody who's trying to like reform the system, I naturally look at our border crisis and I say, well, let's let's reduce our cri crime rate doing the one thing that is the most practical thing, which is just a function of a, of, of a sovereign nation. And that's maintain your borders. Wow.